now an official welcome here from the mat. There's no need to grab certain things, but what you might want to have is a block as usual. The mat is obvious and maybe uh, blankets and things like that uh, for relaxation at least. So we will begin lying down on the backs, but maybe before you go there, I will show you the mudra of the day. It's Surya Mudra. So we're folding the ring finger into the palm of the hand and then touching the thumb upon so that the ring finger stays in place. As you come to lie down here on the mat, uh, potentially just simply lying down on the back, it's okay to keep the feet stepped down, checking in with your pelvis and the lower back to notice if this is a better position or the legs extended. You could, however, also support underneath the knees using rolled up cushions, blankets or a bolster. Let your arms just fall out to the side. You might choose to wiggle the pelvis and their shoulders into place and then touch your ring finger into the palm and let your thumb hold the finger down for Surya Mudra. Once you have done so, please do take time to acknowledge what it feels like to be you on the mat at this point in time. There could be sensations coming up as well as thoughts arising right from the body. And then there could be sensations and feelings arising from the mudra or your hand position. As you take a note, let your breath start to deepen and potentially direct your breaths into full yogic breathing so that the belly rises first and your lower ribs are expanding and you take the breath to your collarbones before exhaling from the belly to the ribs, to the collarbones. And you might keep that flowing in a pace and intensity that feels expansive, but is free of any stress or strain. And while you do so, your hands might direct the breath towards the abdomen more than anywhere else. And if it becomes uncomfortable or it feels forced to move the breath elsewhere, the deep abdominal breathing is perfect as well. I will start by sharing a poem by Rumi, which is the card that I have picked for our practice today. The poem is called The All-Encompassing Hand. You are the essence of my existence. Who am I? A mirror in your hand. Whatever you do, I will do. I am your irresistible reflection. With every breath I feel, my heart is beating with yours. In your joy, I am exuberant. In your sadness, I am in sorrow. If you are bitter, I become bitter. If you are grace, I become grace. My joy is when I am bewildered in your beauty and taste the sweetness of love on your lips. If I pick a rose without you, it becomes a thorn in my hand. If I am the thorn, I become the rose in your hand. So with this oracle comes to you as the hand of the divine. 
It is the all encompassing hand. The hand that has no limitation upon the blessings. It can bestow a lift of the troubles. It communicates through sacred touch. Allow that divine hand to reach for you, love it. Don't turn it away. Don't let old shame, guilt, or mistaken notion of fools and dependence keep you from accepting this heavenly hand. This hand reaches to gently wipe away tears of the past. To deftly unravel the ties that have bound your own hands, preventing you from fully giving and receiving according to your worth which is incontestable and without limit. So maybe through the practice today, you can feel that touch, connect with the divine as is our ultimate goal. The reason for the mutra today is basically the same. We're bringing in light, we're building our strength, connecting with the universe. You might keep the breath flowing as deeply as you begin it. You might keep the mutra in your hands and you may keep also the bodily position as you next inhale, circle your arms along the floor all the way up over the head. On a breath out, circle the arms and bring them back down along the sides of the body. You might still have the mutra in your hands as you repeat that, inhaling, drawing a sun around you, the arms raised over the head. And with the out breath, drawing the sun back down as you bring your arms back by your sides. Repeat that for another couple of breaths. Once you have released the arms down by the side, you can still hold on to the mudra if it's comfortable for you, but no necessity. You might step your feet down onto the ground. Take a bend into the elbows as your arms are out to the sides, the shoulders grounded. And breathe in to let your head roll to one side. Breathing out to center the head. Inhaling as you roll the head to the other side. Exhaling, center. Let's roll the head twice more to each side. Keeping the head on the mat. So it's really just a rolling of the head. Maybe feeling that extension around the neck or simply the mobilization of the spine in that area. As you come back into the center then, you might release the mudra now and stretch your fingers out. On an in-breath, make gentle fists with both of your hands. On the out-breath, lifting the arms, touching the palms or even the forearms over the chest. On the inhale, making gentle fists and opening the arms. On the out breath, repeat, palms or even forearms touching. Inhaling as you open. Extra option to lift the upper body 
On the inhale, still lie back, gentle fists, cactus arms. Out breath, you may lift or touch hands and forearms alone. We'll go for two more, breathing in, exhaling. In breath and out breath. As you release back down on this inhalation, also release the fists and lengthen the arms alongside the body. If your feet aren't on the ground yet, you might place the feet at about hip distance onto the mat. There's quite a distance between the feet and the buttocks though. Flexing your right foot with the inhalation, sliding the leg out, but maintaining as much stillness in the upper body as is possible. Then point the foot as you exhale and slide it back down onto the mat. Left foot flexes, inhaling, sliding the leg out. The leg can stay in touch with the mat, but stability in the upper body. Point the foot. A breath out to slide the foot back into place. We'll do that once more on each side. On the inhalation, extending the leg out, pointing the foot on the out by slamming the foot to the mat. Left leg flex, inhale, extending, point, and a breath out to land the foot. Extension will remain the same here as we now only move the right leg. Extension on the inhale, pointing, and on the out breath, might you now hug the right knee into the chest. Flex the foot again, arms by the sides to help extending and holding upper body still. Pointing the foot on the out breath, knee hugged into the chest. Two more rounds as you breathe in, extending the leg out, pointing with the out breath, an extra option of tucking your nose up to the knee. Then arms back by the side, stability as you breathe in to extend the leg out, point and exhale, optional lift of the head. Releasing your upper body down, and let your left leg slide out long. Left hand to the kneecap, right arm falls away from the body and the breath out to gently guide the knee across. Take a note of how this feels in your back, glutes, side of the hip. And then rolling again onto the back. Let both feet step back down at about hip distance apart. Still, there can be quite a gap between the heels and the buttocks. Arms are down along the side of the body, palms touching the ground. Flexing the left foot, breathing in to slide the leg out long across the mat. Pointing the foot on the out breath, taking the knee with a hug into the chest. Inhaling stability as the leg slides out, pointing the foot as you bring the leg back, a hug of the knee to the chest. Arms by the sides, inhaling, extending the leg out again, pointing the foot. On the exhale, the extra option, not only to hug the knee in, but nose to the knee. Release upper body and arms, inhaling to extend out, point, and an exhale as you might lift the nose up to the knee. Hold the knee in as you relax your upper body, slide the right leg out long, and keep the right hand upon the knee with the left arm falling to the side. On the exhalation, come into a twist carefully, and the same here, please check the sensations, lower back, pelvis, what is happening there. As you roll again onto the back, give both knees a hug into the chest. 
Allow a little rocking action across the back from side to side. And as usual, it's up to you to just roll onto the side or have a few movements rocking forwards and backwards to come into a seated position. The seated pose often my excuse to use a block and I will do the same today to raise my sitting bones a little bit off the ground, potentially making it easier to sit up straight in the back. Placing, if that's available to you, one leg in front of the other. However, if that's not comfortable, you could extend the legs out or bring them into a more diamond shape. Shuffle, just like I usually do, finding the sitting bones on the ground. And as you come then into the center, let the tailbone drop a little bit as well. You might bring your hands or the backs of them against the thighs or the lap. And if it's right for you returning to Surya Mudra, so the ring finger folding back into the palm of the hand, the thumb holding the finger down. If you like, you can close the eyes or steady the gaze. So we'll continue our practice with three rounds of the sound OM. OM is the universal sound that holds all the sounds of the universe within itself and also helps us to connect to the divine. We sound it out as three sounds, A, U, M, and have a little pause to cater for the silence that follows. Let's begin with the breath in for the first of three. Uh, uh, As you retreat back into the stillness within, Grounding still deeply through the sitting bones into your support. You might lean a little bit back and swap the foot in front if you are in an easy pose and hands might here help. With the inhale then reaching your arms out as you draw a sun around you lifting both arms over the head. And with the hour bus, a gentle twist to the right. And inhale to rise the sun again, centering the body. With the hour bus, then a gentle twist to the left. Let's repeat that once more to each side. Inhaling, reaching up. Exhaling for a twist. Breathing in. And out to twists. The next inhale, reaching the arms back up. And with the exhale, placing the backs of the hands again on top of your thighs. Maintain your tall position. The sense of sitting solidly and supported. You can choose to practice the eyes with opening them or keeping them closed. As you roll your eyes all the way to the right, centering the eyes, rolling them all the way to the left, centering the eyes, 
the head stays still even when you now look up to the sky or the ceiling. Then center the eyes again and look down towards the floor. Centering the eyes again. Looking up to the right top corner and straight down to the bottom left. Then center the eyes. Looking up to the left top corner and straight down to the bottom right. Then center the eyes. Close them briefly if you practice with eyes open, relaxing the eyes into the darkness. Then opening the eyes again, starting to look up and create a circle then towards the right, bottom, left, up. And another round to the right, bottom, left and up centering the eyes. Lifting the eye gaze back up to the ceiling, rolling the eyes to the left, downwards to the right and back up. One more to the left, down, right, up. And centering the eyes, maybe closing the eyes. These eye exercises are also part of the yoga practice and fit well into the season of autumn. When we move the eyes in this way, we're training the eyes and sometimes that even helps with eyesight. Let's relax the hands and fingers and maybe wiggling the fingers, maybe even moving a little bit through the wrists. And then changing position as we approach the front side of the mat in the standing pose, you might like to place your block at the front side of the mat as well. So we come to stand here at the front side of the mat, the feet at hip distance or big toes together, outer edges of the feet are parallel. We'll begin with a simple sun salutation. Please feel free to take options. On the inhale, reaching the arms up. Bring the palms to touch, soften the knees and breathe out to forward fold. On the inhale, there's a half lift. On the exhale, stepping the right foot back into a lunge. You might be on your fingertips here, create length and spine and back length. And there's a choice here for you as you might bring your back knee down or keep the knee off the mat, then step into down dog. So down dog or all fours, your alternative. On the in-breath now, roll the spine forward. Come into a plank or a kneeling plank. On the out breath, lower down onto the front of your body. Touch the tops of the feet actively into the mat and take a breath to lift the head and the chest. For a gentle cobra, the shoulders are down, the elbows are snugged in, the hands might be gently grounded. Out breath, release the head to the ground. Inhale, come to all fours and feel free to stay here or tuck the toes under and exhale for a downward facing dog. So that's the first one we will pause in. Please create any movement that feels right for you in that shape. That could be movement of the head and the neck, the shoulders, the hands, the feet, the legs, the hips. Walking then the feet forward to the front side of the mat into a forward bend. Let the whole upper body hang down and wait for an out breath to uncurl the spine into standing. With the inhale, reaching both arms back up. Bring the palms down the midline as you bend your knees and fold back to Tanasana forward bend. 
on the inhale, a half lift. Out breath, left foot steps down the mat. Stay on the fingertips, extension in the back leg, extension in the spine. Choices, back knee down or leaving it off the ground, stepping to all fours or down at facing dog. On the inhale now, roll your spine forward, finding a plank or a kneeling plank. Exhale, let's lower down onto the front of the body again. Bodies round, little cups with your hands, fingertips wider than the mat, and a breath in to lift the head and the chest again. Notice how here you could even shrug the shoulders, leave the elbows at ease, and really lift forward from your sternum. Grounding actively through the tops of the feet, another inhalation. And on the out by surrender back to the mat, placing hands again underneath the shoulders, inhaling all fours, choose to stay or exhaling for a downward facing dog. Notice if your body is prepared to hold the dog or if you would rather want to move your downward facing dog. If you are moving, feel free to let it wiggle. If you are still, please soften the knees and find your tailbone stretching far up and back. Then let's walk the feet again to the short front edge of the mat into the standing forward bend. On the out busts, uncurling through the spine, vertebrae at a time. Let the arms reach out and lift them back up. On the exhalation, let the arms drift back out to the sides, turning the palms forward, coming to stand in mountain pose. The feet again, let them be apart, at least at the heels, so the outer edges are aligning with each other. For this uh, standing uh, practice, you might like to place your hands upon the hips themselves rather than the waist, so a little bit lower. Stepping the right foot back, just a step and grounding the whole foot down. The back toes will diagonally point forward here at the end of the mat. So from this point, take a deep breath and reach both arms out and up. As you bring the hands down the midline, take a breath out and let the hands then slide down the thigh, maybe towards the shin. Keep some length here like a half lifting position and then breathe out and let the hands slide down all the way. You may use a block here, hands why we left it at the front side of the mat. If your arms can't support, place the hands onto a block instead. Bring a bit of pressure down into the ball of the front foot, trying to keep the pelvis here aligned behind the back. Pyramid pose, out breath. Lengthening the next out breath even further. As you next inhale, bring a little bend into the front knee and reach the crown of the head forward. Taking your back foot, the right foot, aligning now the heels with each other. Placing both hands, palms touching to the inside of your front foot. And then a breath in as the right hand slides up the arm, crushes across the chest and extends towards the ceiling. Now reach into length of your spine. Arm lifted too strong, like for myself at this point, the hand can rest in the side of the waist, yet the shoulders are now stacked. Feel into the front leg. Press down into the ball of the foot once more, keeping a micro bend in that front knee so the leg is completely switched on. Arms might be open, you can choose to turn your gaze up and tuck the chin in lightly. 
or turn your gaze down towards the floor. One more breath to reach the arms out by, and then fold in your fingers, wrist, elbow, shoulder, until the hands are touching again. Bending back into the front knee and readjusting the back foot. So step it back to where it was before. Again, lengthening the spine forward in this position. It is now the left hand that goes to the side of the waist. And we're rolling the left shoulder back, standing firmly on both of the feet. Instead of hand on the leg, you can have hand on the block. And if your breath is now flowing, even in the twist, you might like to extend your left arm up. This is only an option if the breast is really smooth. The posture is already complete as it is. Let's release the arm coming back down. The knee is bending, the hands might reach to the mat and the foot from behind comes forward. Let your whole body hang forward into Uttanasana, the standing forward bend. On a long, slow exhalation, rolling the spine up into standing. Reach the arms out as if you draw sunshine around you and reach the arms over the hips. With the out breaths, bring the hands back down upon the hips. Stepping the left foot back this time, just a step, and grounding the whole back foot. You've got a hip distance between the feet and the back foot's toes are slightly in a diagonal, allowing your pelvis to look forward. With the inhalation, reaching the arms back out and up. Draw the hands down the midline as you place the hands upon the thighs. Keep the spine reaching forward for a moment. The pressure down to the front foot, already adjusting the pelvis. And you may then exhale, and lower the upper body. The same here, a block might come in handy resting the hands upon as you lower your nose towards the knee. The same here as in the triangle, there's always micro bends in both knees and we're pressing down into the ball of the front foot to keep the pelvis at level. Another out breaths in this shape. Then an inhale to bring a light bend into the front knee. Slide the back heel to align with the front heel. And so the toes are opening a bit more to the front. Bring the palms of your hands to touch inside of your front foot. And then take your breast to let the left arm slide up the right, brush across the chest, and then extend upward. If the arm extension to the ceiling doesn't suit, bring the hand into the side of the waist instead. As you reach your spine forward in this shape, grounding through the ball of the foot, think of the leg or even feel the leg switching on. Trikonasana, you could look down or up with a light chin tuck. Breathing in to reach up more. Then fold your fingers in the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder. You might bring a bend back into the front knee, reach to the ground and take your back foot into the same position that it was prior, so hip distance apart. As you straighten the front leg, the hands might slide up. So you find the length in the spine forward once more. Here, the right hand goes to the side of the waist. And if it works for you, you could keep the spine forward or roll the right shoulder back. Same option there. You may lift that right arm to the ceiling, but only if your breast is still smooth. So we're still in the twisted trikonasana or paravrita version. 
notice the changes in the body despite the similarities of these poses. On the next out breath, swing your arm down or release it down, bend the knee, take the foot from the back to the front and hang down in a forward fold. Long out breaths to uncurl the spine, lifting the shoulders again and shrugging the shoulders back and down. If you like, you can turn yourself now to the long side of the mat to step the feet a little bit further apart. I suggest to point the toes into the corners of the mat there. You might re-engage with Surya Mudra by bringing your ring finger into the palm, touching the thumb on top. Let's draw a sun around as you lift both arms out to the side and over the head. With the exhale, <laughs> I find cactus arms and bend into your knees, goddess pose. On the inhale, straighten the legs, stretch the arms back up. On the exhale, finding your goddess pose again, nice and tall spine. Inhaling, straighten the legs, reaching up. On the out breath, the core is on as you come back to the goddess pose. Now holding here with the knees bent, the spine tall, the shoulders at ease, maybe there's the Surya or Sun Mutra in your hands. Option to lift your heels. Then turn the heels out and ground the feet. Extend the arms as you breathe in. And maybe let the hands rest upon the legs. As you breathe out, the knees are soft. Let the hands slide down the legs and maybe find them then underneath your shoulders. Outer edges of the feet now aligning with each other. As you come back onto your fingertips, breathing in. On the outburst, take the hands towards the right and lower your nose towards the right knee. We will pause here and you lengthen the out breath to draw the nose closer towards the knee. Couple more breaths, just lengthening towards the right leg. Then lift your spine forward, hands to center. And on the out breath, take over to the left leg Lowering the nose towards the knee here. Once more, holding. Longer out breaths. Then bring the hands back to the front, lengthening the spine forward again as you inhale. With the out breaths, a full wide legged standing forward bend. The hands might now stay underneath the shoulders. You might lift the shoulders into the shoulder sockets and bend forward by leaning the weight towards the front side of the feet, but leaving the heels on the ground. As you heel and toe the feet a little in, bending the knees and uncurling through the spine on a long, slow out breath. Lift the shoulders when you come to stand and shrug them back and down. You can stay facing either side, whichever suits you best at this point. We will return to Surya Mudra, so ring finger folding back in. And we'll stand tall and strong, preparing for a balance, standing on the left foot. Right knee might lift, Rikshasana, you can place the heel on the foot, against the ankle, against the lower leg, or even help your foot up 
to the inner thigh. This last option requires a bit of pressure between the foot and the inner thigh as you move them against each other. Here is your perfect tree with the sun in your hands. An option here to keep the posture steady, but lift the arms up a few times, drawing a huge sun around you on the in breaths and letting the sun sit on the out breaths. If that's enjoyable, repeat twice more. When you complete it, you might bring your knee up in front and land the foot returning to a mountain stance. Let's lift the left knee and make a new choice on this side. While we aim for symmetry in our practice, the sides are so vastly different that sometimes one needs to do something different. If the foot is lifted to the inner thigh again, press the inner thigh into the foot, the foot against the inside of your leg. Find the steadiness in the stands of the tree or rikshasana. And option to create three sun rises on the inhale and sunsets on the exhale. Deep for breathing. <laughs> Let's lift the knee and land the foot back down. Release the mudra, opening the palms of your hands. If your knees are happy, step the feet a tad bit wider apart, turning the toes outwards. If the knees are semi-happy, stop at halfway point. Inhale, reach the arms back up. On the exhale, bring the hands down the midline and begin to squat. You can stay at any point. If it's possible, you might come all the way down, touching the palms of the hands, and using the elbows to keep the knees open. For those of you standing or feeling they want some extra support, you can come down to sit on the mat in a way that suits you. For everyone else, you could extend the arms forward, lower the gaze. Now I've got a wall behind me, so I will use my hands, but you could just basically sit down from there and extend your legs out in front. With the legs out long, we could sit either on a block, a folded blanket, or take a rolled up end of the mat to elevate the sitting bones. Press the hands directly down by the sides of the hips. Flex the feet so the toes are turned up and bend the knees. Let the shoulders be down, the spine be long. Let's breathe in deeply. And with the outer starting to lean the belly towards the thighs, you might then bring your arms forward into a lax position before you could choose to lower the rest of the upper body. The knees bent is still engaging into the backs of the legs if the feet are in a deep flexion. However, some of you might like to straighten the legs out. Please feel free to practice this posture in the way that suits you best. Sometimes when we reach a little bit too far, and for some that might be the feet, we feel pinches here and there. In that case, I would back off if that was my day. 
If you can easily reach the feet, doesn't matter if your knees are bent, take a hold of the balls of the feet. Using that hold on the legs or the feet to lengthen your spine forward on the in-breath. And then surrender the body again, arms softening, shoulders soft, and the body just relaxing into it. Stay here and now practice longer out breaths. Surrendering to a bow forward. You might let go of uh, the hands on legs or feet and lengthen the spine halfway out of the shape. Inhale. With the out breath, you use your center to rise to sit. You might want to come off the support here and have enough space behind you, potentially on the mat, to lie back. I would keep the block by the side of the mat for in a while. Reaching forward as you breathe in and then slowly and with control, rounding your spine down onto the floor. When you come to rest here, place the palms down flat by the sides, your arms along the side of the body. Now step your feet up as close as they can naturally get towards your buttocks, landing the feet then down outer edges parallel at about hip distance apart. With the breath in, flatten your spine onto the mat. With the breath out, squeeze your buttocks so the hips are lifting up for a bridge. You might enjoy just holding the bridge here, and you could draw the tailbone up towards the backs of the knees. If it appears better to you to support the bridge with a block, you could slide the block halfway up underneath the sacrum but I'd encourage you to nevertheless draw the tailbone up towards the backs of the knees so you're feeling some kind of extension as well as strength in the hip flexors and the thighs. If you're not using a block, you might walk your shoulders under, interlace the hands behind the back and lengthen the arms down onto the mat. Taking the shoulders back out from underneath. Landing the palms of the hands back onto the ground and rolling the spine down onto the floor. Let's extend the right leg to the ceiling and place the ankle to the thigh. Let the knee roll out to the side. This might be your reclined figure four stretch. Or you could reach your right arm between the legs, lift the left foot and pick up the back of the thigh or hold onto the shin. Keep a flexion here in the right ankle, engaging around your knee while you're hugging the legs in. You might experience that when you lean a tiny bit to the left or the right, very likely the left, to find a deeper sitting tight point around the right side of the buttocks. You might choose to hold there or add a light rocking, almost like a vibration over that spot to stimulate movement in the fascia there, potentially assisting to release this trigger point. Then hold still to hug and landing your left foot back close to the buttocks onto the floor. 
you can lengthen the arms back down alongside the body, palms touching the mat. Your choice to leave the ankle up there for a challenge or place the foot back down. As on the inhale, the spine flattens onto the ground. And with the exhale, squeezing the hips back into a bridge shape. Maybe that bridge has only one leg. Lifting the leg up as you breathe in, extend the leg. Lift the hips a bit more. And as you roll the spine down, bend the knee and place the foot back onto the ground. In breath, a left leg is extending. Ankle lands on the right thigh. Let the knee roll open and maintain a flexion of the foot. Option to stay here or reach the left arm between the legs, lifting the right foot, taking a hold behind the thigh or across the shin. In your choices, you might also choose to lean a little bit to the right. Maybe it's the left for you. And find that tighter spot that you could enjoy bringing space to. You might then add that little vibrational micro rocking movement that could potentially assist to release. Landing your right foot quite close towards the vertex, releasing the arms back alongside the body. You can again choose to place the left foot to the ground or tilt the pelvis to flatten the spine here as you inhale. And then we'll all squeeze the vertex up into a bridge, whether that bridge has one foot on the ground or both. Maybe on the next inhale, extending the left leg and pushing the hips up a little further. And while you brace out to roll the spine down, bending the knee and landing the foot back onto the mat. I'm not assuming anything at all. So if you feel today you would really like to practice a shoulder stand, if you haven't done one before, I only teach half shoulder stands really. You could, if the neck and the shoulders are fine, have a look and lift the hips into your hands and then drop the hips into the hands as you leave your legs extended diagonally over the body. Those of you aware of full shoulder stands, healthy in neck and shoulders may practice that. I do have an alternative for those that don't want to lift their hips. You could uh, flatten the spine back onto the mat, squeeze the hips up on the out breath, and either choose a flat or halfway block underneath the sacrum. You could from there then lift your feet and come to your own shoulder stand as the legs might be lifted upwards. If you with the block, trust the block, you can also relax the arms. I'd recommend for all variations to push the balls of the feet upwards and let your toes fan out. So the legs get engaged from back and sides. Encouraging the downward flow towards the upper parts of the body, into the torso, and you're feeling even a rush of blood coming into the head. If you're holding your hips in your hands, slowly roll the spine to the floor. If you're on a block, take a hold of the block, bend the knees to the chest, Landing your feet back down about hip distance apart, lifting the hips away from the block to remove it, and then rolling the spine down onto the ground as well. 
You might lift your feet back off the floor and hug the knees to the chest. Before inhaling to open the arms out wide and exhaling to let the knees roll to the sides. On the inhale, draw knees to the center. On the exhale, roll them to the other side. Let's repeat that once more to each side, using your inner strength to come to center and taking the knees across, inhaling and exhaling. As you might bring your knees back into center, give them another loving hug and embrace, an option to lift the nose between the knees before releasing the upper body, relaxing the arms, landing the feet back down to the mat. If you would like to extend the body fully, I would totally understand, and you might want to have a deep full stretch before you settle into relaxation pose or shavasana. If you have a bolsa nearby, you might slide that underneath your knees, Maybe have a little cushioning underneath the head. And you could then let your arms fall back out to the side once you found your pose, aiming to find a detachment from the physical sensations. Whereas right now, they could be quite intense. And be that only warmth that you might be experiencing here. But as you let your body become still, the breath will start to settle. And you might find yourself in a quieter place. Letting the body be and concentrating on the flow of your breathing. If it feels right for you to add Surya Mudra to your relaxation, you could fold your ring finger back into the palm and touch the thumb on top. Taking energies towards the area of the solar plexus, creating light and lightness in. I will read Rumi's poem to you again. The all encompassing hand. You are the essence of my existence. Who am I? A mirror in your hand. Whatever you do, I will do. I am your irresistible reflection. With every breath I feel, my heart is beating with yours. In your joy, I am exuberant. In your sadness, I am in sorrow. If you are bitter, I become bitter. If you are grace, I become grace. My joy is when I am bewildered in your beauty and taste the sweetness of love on your lips. If I pick up a rose without you, it becomes a thorn in my hand. If I am the thorn, I become the rose in your hand. Life is the touch bestowed by my hand. Shall you receive me? Let me love you. Let me restore your soul and you mind you. There is nothing to fear now. Come, lay down your weapons and your fear for this moment. Quit using that mouse to cry for war or to cry in despair. Bring yourself to my table and use that mouth to taste some bold and rich wine instead. 
enjoy with me in this moment the unbreakable bond that lies between us. Allow me to bring the cup of wine to your lips. Behind your head, so gently, lies my all-encompassing hand. Know the peace of my love. So deeply can it register with you now that you shall never again forget it. The message here is, there may be a situation or circumstance in your life that you may feel is somehow unable to be solved. This message comes with reassurance that there is nothing beyond the reach of the divine hand of grace. All can be solved. All can be resolved. There's always a higher, better, more beautiful outcome possible. Surrender for a few more breaths into the stillness of Shavasana. Allow your next breath to expand the abdomen. Let the breath gently escape the mouth. Release through the fingers, hand, the feet, the shoulders. Create some movement in your body, waking it up. You can choose to rise straight over the front or bend your knees and roll to your side instead. Finding your way into a seated shape. Where you might touch the hands together at heart center. You could choose to close your eyes or steady the gaze here. As we connect to the heart, we're connecting to this hand that Rumi spoke about. If the hand's touching the heart, we're touching the center of unconditional love and connection to the divine. Let's finish the practice with another three rounds of the universal sound of Om. Let's breathe in for the first. Ah. Ah. Keeping the hands connected to heart center, reminder to share the love as we gently bow to each other. Namaste. Namaste.